hey, 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 woohoo, hey, hola, hola, oh, I love saying that, one more time, hola, oh, well, I love it, hey, welcome to yes, another math video, woohoo, yeah, yeah, this, my friends, is lesson 3.5, that's right, chapter 3, and our topic of the day is going to be decimal addition, yeah! Okay, an essential question. That is our learning target, our focus, our purpose, our purpose. No, I'm just kidding. So many words they use for this. Objective is what they used when I first started teaching. That is what this is. It's focusing us on what we're going to learn today. And that is how can you use base 10 blocks to model decimal addition. And my friends, we are going to learn this today. I hope you're excited. Oh, I love math. Yes. Now it says connect. You can use base 10 blocks to help you find sums of decimals. Woohoo! I'm excited about that. Let's see. First thing says investigate. We have our materials, base 10 blocks, and if you have them at home or at school or wherever you have some base 10 blocks, it would be really cool because this really is a hands-on activity. By all means, get those materials out so that you can investigate with me. So first thing says use base 10 blocks to model the sum of 34 hundredths and 27 hundredths. Cool. Two decimals, yes. Add the hundredths first by combining them. The hundredths first. We need to know the hundredths place. We have a four, you can see, in 34 hundredths, and we have a seven in 27 hundredths in the actual hundredths place. Do you need to regroup these hundredths? Is the question. Explain. Would we need to regroup those? Yes, we would. If you're thinking about that, well, if you look at that, you see the seven hundredths plus the four hundredths, that's going to equal eleven hundredths, which is greater than nine hundredths. Because we, have, we use the base 10 system in math. It's called base 10. Every time we get a group of 10, we move on. Okay, so it's really important to, to understand that. Regrouping when the sum is more than 10, we have to move over. For example, like 10 hundredths, we can take that and make that one tenth. And 10, 10 tenths, we can make one whole. That is our base 10 system, grouping by 10. So let's show that with our hundredths. So you can see with my manipulatives here, I have the four hundredths and I'm adding seven hundredths. That's going to give me 11 hundredths. Now I've just moved them over there to show you the 11 hundredths. But what I can do now is I can regroup and take 10 of those hundredths and make one tenth. So really this is equal to one tenth with one hundredth. So I was able to regroup, rename. And that's what the next question said, add the tenths by combining them. Do you need to regroup the tenths? Explain. Let's take a look at our tenths. We have a three in the tenths place and we have a two in the tenths place. No, we do not need to regroup because three tenths plus two tenths plus, now we have that one regroup tenth that we made is equal to six tenths, which is not greater than nine tenths. So it won't go over for us to have to right, make a whole number part. Again, just as a quick overview here, we took our four hundredths we added them with our seven hundredths. We realized that that gives us eleven hundredths. We can't have eleven hundredths in that place value. The most we can have is nine. Then we need to regroup. So we took our eleven hundredths. We renamed them by giving that quantity one tenth with the one hundredth because we had eleven. We added that one tenth onto the three tenths and the two tenths that we had in our original numbers. And then we ended up with six tenths. And of course, that's not, when we, we answered our question, it's not greater than nine tenths, so we're fine. So now we can say that we record the sum. What does that equal? Well, we have six tenths and one hundredth, 61 hundredths. There you go. And again, putting that zero in front of that decimal makes it easier to identify that we have 61 hundredths. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Let's move on, my friends. Well, yeah, bring it on down. Now we have draw conclusions. Yes, I feel like I'm in a science investigation. Yes, we are going to draw some conclusions of what we learned. What if you combine the tenths first and then the hundreds? Explain how you would regroup. Hmm, okay. 
Well, I would still have to regroup the hundreds, right? The same way by exchanging those ten hundreds that we had for one tenth and then adding the regroup tenth to the combined tenth. So in the sense, it really doesn't matter which way you do it. Once you start adding each place value, once it exceeds nine and you end up with a group of ten, that's how our place value uh, works, our base ten system like I mentioned earlier. Next we have mathematical practice six. Here it says that we attend to precision and it says I can use precision when solving problems and communicating my ideas. The importance of problem solving and just calculating accurately and efficiently and you know making sure my answer matches up with what I'm asked to do whether it's to estimate or find an exact answer. And of course we're always speaking, reading, writing, listening with with math. Mathematically we're doing that. That is attend to precision. Okay disappear. Thank you. Okay, now if you add two decimals that are each greater than five tenths, will the sum be less than or greater than one whole, 1.0? Okay, I think that's pretty easy, don't you think? I think so. Yes, the sum will definitely be greater than 1.0. If it's greater than a half, it's like taking a half and a half because five tenths plus five tenths is equal to one whole. So adding together two decimals that are already greater than five tenths, it's going to give you a sum that is greater than one whole. Easy. Hey, page master. Page master? Page master, can you please turn the page? Aha, I see I had to use that magic word. Please. Okay, we'll remember our manners next time. Hey, making some connections, okay. Let's make a connection. You can use a quick picture to add decimals greater than one. Cool. Step one, model the sum of 2.5 and 2.8 with a quick picture. Okay. Step two says, add the tenths. Okay. Are there more than nine tenths? In this case, yes. Yeah, because five plus eight is 13. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. If there are more than nine tenths, regroup. Okay, is that what the picture's showing us? Looks like we have over here. Hmm, I see. We have 13. Yep, there's 5. There's another 5. There's 3. That's 13. They crossed out the 10 tenths and made another hole. Cool. Yeah, now it says add the ones. Okay. Okay, so we're going to add the ones. Step 3 says draw a quick picture of your answer. Okay, that should be pretty easy. Okay, it's time to use infinite cloner time. Okay. We have two. We have three. We have four. Remember, we made a new one up there. That's right, a regrouped one. And then how many tenths were left over? Three. One, two, and three. That was fun. Can we do it again? <laughs> and so what's our answer? Hey, if you said 5.3, you would be right on track. Yes, sirree, Bob. Okay, now it's time for share and show. Again, it says complete the quick picture to find the sum. Again, this is a good time for you to just put the video on pause, work this one out, and see how you did. Okay, here I go. So first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and add the hundreds place. This is what I'm thinking because I see 7 and I see a 5. Well, 7 plus 5 is 12 and that is more than 9. It means I need to regroup. So what I'm going to do is circle these. So I see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So I see the 10 right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a big circle around this. Why are you whispering, Mr. War? I don't know. I think it's because I'm thinking they're on pause. Oh, boy, that was kind of weird. Whoa, okay. I can still live with that. So I'm going to draw an extra line. There we go. Okay. I know I fixed them. I'm such a perfectionist. Okay. So I did that. And then it said, okay, so then I need to go to the next. Yes. The next place value, which is the tenths place. I see a three and an eight. That looks like 11 to me. And that's more than nine. Again, I have to regroup. This is like regular when you were in primary, you know, like third grade, second grade. Okay, boys and girls. Now... You trying to make a 10 now. Okay, wait a Okay, actually, I didn't use that voice, but you get the idea. So 8 and 3 is 11, so I'm going to go ahead and regroup these. I see 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Oh, my goodness. 3, 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. I hear they are. 
Ooh, that was kind of tricky trying to draw that line around those two. But that does give me 10. And that means I can put on another hole. And this is this guy right over here. And of course, this guy was him, just not to confuse you. And something that I wanted to ask you earlier and I forgot, like you guys are going to be able to answer on my video. But I was going to ask you, you know, is, you know, by using these place value uh, tools, why are we able to use them for decimals? Is it appropriate to use them for decimals? It's kind of interesting. Yeah, you know what? Each block here represents just the 10 times as much. So even though we used to call this a 100 and we would call those tens and ones, because every place value is 10 times greater or one tenth the value of the digit to the left or right, because it's always a power of 10, now we can just call that's one whole, one tenth, one hundredth. So yes, it's very appropriate to use that. Anyway, so now it's time to just simply count what I have remaining. It looks like I have three holes. Now I'm going to have a decimal. Looks like I have two tenths. And it looks like I have two hundredths. Now I have no idea if that's actually the right answer because we use manipulatives to figure it out. So let's see, and indeed, that that is the correct answer by simply lining up our decimals here. Big key with adding decimals, I'm probably jumping ahead here, but I'm sure you guys know this is to make sure that with that decimal, bring it on down, right? That's what I always say, bring it on down, right there, really important. So now I have 12, carry my one, because that's how we regroup. Here we have 11 plus one, that's 12, and you can see how that happened. We had to regroup, and then we end up with three holes. Woohoo! yeah, yeah, and we have a little question here to explain how you know where to write the decimal point in the sum. Oh, okay. Well, the easy way, I suppose, is that you just memorize, right, that the decimal goes between the ones place and the tenths place. However, you could expand your thinking and say, you know, um, it's the whole part and the fraction part and the decimal part. So that's how I really like to think of it is because anything that's a whole piece, everything's there, then we say that's a whole number. Anything less than that, you're going to end up into, you know, fraction and decimal territory. And it can get scary. But we always get through it because, hey, just because we're afraid of something doesn't mean we don't confront it. Okay, now, my friends, I know you can hear that music in the background. I know. I always feel a little melancholy when I hear that sound because I know that it means another video has come to an end. But you know, there's always one waiting around the corner. Now, my friends, thank you so much for being a part of this math video. Now, live long and prosper.